Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and in today's video, we will talk about how to guarantee the quality of your earth rods. By the end of this video, you will fully understand the electrical and mechanical tests required for earth rods, including resistivity test, coating thickness test, bend test, adhesion test, and the tensile test. First, let's briefly discuss earth rods and their importance. Earth rods are a type of earth electrode that are buried directly in the ground to facilitate the flow of fault currents towards the ground. In North America, these rods are commonly also called ground rods. Here are some technical properties which are essential for earth rods. Firstly, electrical resistivity. This is the measure of how strongly a material opposes the flow of electrical current. A low resistivity indicates a material that readily allows the flow of electricity. Corrosion resistance. Earth rods should be highly resistant to corrosion. When in contact with soil, Rods can degrade over time due to various chemical reactions. Corrosion can significantly reduce the effectiveness and lifespan of the earth rod. Thirdly, mechanical strength. Earth rods need to be strong enough to be driven into the ground without bending, breaking or getting damaged. This is especially important when the rod has to be installed in hard or rocky soil. Fourthly, Conductivity. The rod must have high electrical conductivity to ensure that electrical charge can be effectively discharged into the ground. So let's explore the different types of tests that ensure that we are meeting these technical parameters. Let's start with electrical resistivity testing. This test measures the electrical resistance of earth rods, ensuring that they meet the resistivity levels required by international earthing standards. At our NABL accredited lab, we use the four wire method to measure resistance. This involves injecting current through one pair of test leads and sensing milli voltage drop across the test object with the other pair. In this test, you can see the earth rods resistance at the display unit. Based on this, the resistivity needs to be calculated. And this resistivity should be within the specified limits as per IEC 62561 part 2. In the case of copper bonded rods, it should be 0.25 micro ohm meters. You can see the limits in this table. Now, the coating thickness test conducted according to IEC 62561 part 2. This test ensures that earth rods have the minimum required coating thickness. This prevents corrosion, prolongs the rod's lifespan and guarantees proper electrical conductivity. The test also verifies the rod's quality, performance and compliance with safety standards. To conduct the test, we use a coating thickness gauge instrument. It calibrates with the master calibrator plate at the time of testing itself and shows the coating thickness reading in microns. Please note that as per IEC 62561 part 2 and UL467, the minimum copper coating thickness should be 254 microns. Now, the bend test. This test evaluates the earth rod's mechanical strength and flexibility, ensuring it can endure mechanical stress during installation and usage without breaking or losing its integrity. It is crucial for maintaining a reliable grounding system and electrical safety. This test is performed with the earth rod sample holding between a plate and bending up to an angle of 90 degrees. Here, the rod's quality is considered superior if the copper coating is intact after this test. Now, the adhesion test. This test evaluates the bond between the earth rod's core material and its protective coating, ensuring the coating remains intact throughout its lifespan. This provides effective corrosion resistance and preserves electrical performance. On badly manufactured earth rods, you will see the copping coating just peel off during this test. This test is performed by securing a piece of the earth rod between two plates. These plates are positioned closer together than the diameter of the rod. Next, the rod should be hammered, which directly impacts the copper coating. Following the test, the copper coating should remain adhered to the base metal. In any sections where the coating has peeled, it should still be bonded with the base material. Now let's discuss the tensile test. This test ensures earth rods can withstand the required tensile loads, evaluating their ability to endure axial forces without breaking or deforming. By measuring tensile strength, elasticity, and elongation properties, 
This test ensures the rod's structural integrity during installation and service. Here, the earth rod test piece is fixed onto the universal tensile testing machine. Next, a pull force is applied to the rod. Note, the tensile strength should be within the specified limits as per IEC 62561 part 2. You can have a look at the limits in this table. Axis manufactured earth rods comply with IEC 62561 part 2 and UL 467. We ensure the quality of the earth rods by regular testing for every production lot at our in-house test facility. All these tests ensure the earth rods maintain the high quality which ensures the lifespan of your earthing system. These tests are performed at our Axiom Lab in Mumbai, which is accredited by the National Accreditation Board for Testing and Calibration Laboratories, NABL, as per the ISO 17025 and approved by Underwriters Laboratory as well. I hope you now have a clear understanding of testing for earth rods. At Axis, we have a team of 40 plus engineers who are here to help you with designing, installing and testing your lightning protection system. Our products have been used in substations, data centers, factories and even in everyday residential and commercial buildings. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel for more videos about lightning protection and grounding systems along with other videos about electrical engineering. I'll see you in the next video.